Welcome back to Jersey Matters. The floating naval hospital, the USNS Comfort, has now left our area after being just offshore treating patients during this pandemic. It was a homecoming of sorts for the pride of Red Bank Catholic High School, Captain Joseph O'Brien. Here's our interview with the captain. Captain O'Brien, uh, we really appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, Larry, thanks for having me. I appreciate doing it. Appreciate you having us. Yeah, and, and to you and everyone on the ship, of course, thank you for your service even more so during this crisis. I, I, we really all appreciate what you're doing. Uh, explain exactly what you're doing right now. So our mission is to provide relief for the New York and New Jersey hospitals uh, to give excess capability uh, should there be a, should they you know have, need beds uh, you know hospital ex excess capability? So we originally came up here to treat non COVID nineteen patients, uh, and then we realized there wasn't a whole lot of demand for our services there. So we uh, we shifted uh, some stuff around within the hospital to make sure that we were able to protect the patients and the providers, uh, and we're able, we uh, switched to taking patients regardless of their COVID status. So uh, we're take, we've taken the pressure off. We've seen about one hundred and seventy five people on board. And, uh, and actually uh, discharged about 115 right now. Of the 175, how many tested positive for COVID-19? Oh, uh, I'd say probably three quarters of them. Uh, I don't have a good number for you, but about three quarters of them tested positive for, for COVID-19. And how are you set up to treat COVID-19? So uh, we have a full ICU. In fact, uh, we run, we're running the biggest, uh, well, probably the biggest hospital in the entire DOD right now, but certainly the biggest ICU. So I have, I have 80 beds, but I'm sta I have staffing for about 50 right now. Uh, we're filling about 50 beds and uh, about 22 vented patients. So yeah, we have a full capability of, a, of an intensive care unit. And we have, you know, obviously, as you know, you know serious COVID-19 requires a lot, of, uh, a lot of ventilators and a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one attention from providers to make sure people are taken care of and they're getting out here. Governor Cuomo recently said in one of his briefings that he – they, he felt like they overprepared for this, that some of the early models uh, didn't live up to, uh, excuse the word, but didn't live up to the hype, and I know that's inappropriate, but didn't, didn't live up to what they say that they were supposed to be, which is good news, I would think. But are you seeing that? Uh, are you seeing less than you expected? So we came up to take over excess, and as you said, you know, there, some of the estimates, we would, we would have had every single bed filled. Uh, we're not seeing that, and that's great. I mean, I think that, you know, in an ideal world, we wouldn't have been needed at all. We would have showed up, had empty beds, uh, and the, the hospital system would have taken care of. But anything we did take, uh, you know, working closely with ja the Javits Center and the Army there, I think we've seen about uh, 1,500 people between the two of us, so, uh, roughly. So that's 1,500 beds that were opened up for, you know, for New Yorkers. So we did see some relief, um, but again, we're there for relief and excess cap uh, capacity and capability, and I think we, we provide that role. I understand that. And, and so you've seen all of these patients, and, and have you had any deaths? Oh, we have. I mean, unfortunately, the, the, this disease is, uh, is brutal. You know, and you, you know uh, statistically that people go on ventilator, that's a, that's a rough road to come back from. So, yeah, unfortunately, we've had, uh, we've had a couple deaths, but uh, I don't think they were unexpected. How are you keeping safe, you and your, your men and women? So I yeah, saw so you, you saw my team setting up with, with uh, masks. We were early adopters on masks. Uh, before we came up, we, we uh, screened. We made sure we were keeping tabs on each other. So we had that, you know, almost that 14-day incubation period before we started seeing COVID patients. And then we split the hospital. We separated the hospital from the support staff, uh, and we moved some of the providers ashore so that we can further, you know, social distance, make sure that people who are treating COVID-positive patients have the ability to, uh, to you know, self-isolate in a hotel room uh, when they're off shift, uh, and then, you know, cleaning hands, cleaning spaces, you know, making sure that we are wearing masks and uh, social distancing is the key to keeping it, uh, keeping it at bay. Is it difficult to social distance on a ship? It sure is. Uh, I mean, you know, I have a stateroom to myself. That's a rarity. Um, you know, 27 years, that's what I got. I got a stateroom and a, and a, and a head to myself, but we, you know, junior sailors are living in close proximity. Uh, so we, Again, we move people off so that we could increase that spacing, uh, and then the masks and uh, you know and, and personal hygiene is a big thing that, that helps keep that from spreading. Are you all being tested? And if so, has anybody come down with COVID nineteen that is uh, one of your men or one of your officers? 
we have a we have to we we have the capability to test. We test people who are symptomatic, uh, someone who presents to, to sick call or presents to us with a, a fever or any of the other indicators of COVID-19. Uh, we don't te- we're not testing for the sake of testing. Uh, but and if we do, uh, we have had some uh, some crew members test positive, and we take all the appropriate action. Uh, and they're okay. They've, they've been fine. Yeah. Good to go. So in fact, uh, you know, four of them uh, were down for a couple of days, returned to work, and uh, they're down treating patients right now. Now, we wanted to talk to you specifically for a couple of reasons. And again, we really appreciate your time. But because you're the pride of uh, Red Bank High School, I've seen the Facebook posts about you, people all thrilled that they even know you. You, you are their hero right now. That's got to feel be, That's got to feel good. Well, it's, it's good. I mean, most of my family still lives in, uh, in, uh, in, in New Jersey. Uh, you know, Red Bank Catholic, I wouldn't be here today if, uh, if my parents didn't make the sacrifice to send me to, to RBC. And I appreciate them. Uh, I mean, I, again, I'm just doing my job. But I, but I appreciate the, you know, them keeping track of me and you know, flipping out for me. But yeah, I, I'm here today because my parents made that decision. Thank you so much for doing this again. Thank you for your service. Please thank everyone there. And just know that you are the pride of New Jersey right now. Well, I appreciate it, Larry. Thanks thanks for having us. That was Captain Joseph O'Brien, Red Bank Catholic High School, class of 1989. When Jersey Matters continues, helping families dealing with autism during this pandemic. We'll talk about that coming up.